James Charles and Michaela Negrera have gone too far. Let's talk about it, you guys. Okay, so first of all, Michaela Negrera is getting called out because she recently reviewed James Charles Painted. Here we go, roll it. Says these blushes took years to perfect. Let's see if they live up to the hype. Me to say I am obsessed with the packaging would be an understatement. I love this. I'm not here to ride James's ass. This packaging is impeccable. The fact that the paint swatch actually sticks out from the palette and none of those swatches, by the way, on each one are the same. They all have a unique swatch and then the color on the palette aligns with the color inside. This is 11 out of 10 packaging for me. The color range, everything everything would wear every single color in this range we also have the double-sided j15 brush this is beautiful i can attest that james's brushes are so good i use his eye brushes all the time this is perfect for the cream and the powder the packaging may be a sleigh the brush may be a sleigh the color range what about the formula? Oh, you ate with these. You fucking ate, my guy. And you can say whatever you want about James Charles. That's none of my business. But what you can't deny is that he knows his shit. Mm-hmm. Grab a snack and come on back. So after she posted that video, a lot of people had a lot to say on social media. Here's what one person said on TikTok. You can say whatever you want about James Charles. That's none of my business. That's what Michaela said in her review of the new blush duos from Painted by James Charles. Really, Michaela? You seriously said this in a video. So it's none of your business that he's a PDF file. It's none of your business that he's an arrogant prick who made disparaging comments about women, even though those women, those older fat women, like he said, are spending thousands of dollars on his makeup. It's none of your business that he makes other people uncomfortable. It's none of your business that he has continued this egregious predatory behavior as recently as this year. It's none of your business that he's one of the biggest pieces of poo in the beauty industry. Let's make this very clear. Michaela would not be giving James Charles the time of day if he didn't have a huge social media following. That's why she continues to suck up to him. Oh, if you promote me, I'll promote you. The fact that you were fawning over these blushes. Oh my God, the packaging is amazing. The formula is like the best formula ever. Seriously? She did the influencer gasp and she was just enamored by these blushes as if she's never seen a cream and powder blush duo in her life. This is so disappointing, but not surprising. It's just another day and another ridiculous video from Michaela. I find it very fascinating that you choose to promote James Charles, but you think, oh no. I'm not saying she should support him, but I find it interesting that she chooses to support James Charles and not Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star is apparently too controversial, but James Charles is the PDF file. I seriously can't wait until the FTC cracks down on all these influencers with their fake followers and their refusal to follow FTC guidelines when it comes to properly disclosing brand deals and paid partnerships. Peter Mann suggested that that might be the next Dramageddon because if these influencers and brands get fined, it's not going to be in the thousands. It's probably going to be in the millions. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments. I still can't believe that James Charles has a career after everything he's done. And I have to agree 100%. I don't understand. I, I get it. They're very, very polarizing personalities of Jeffree Star and James Charles. But how are you going to review James Charles' makeup but not review Jeffree Star because he's too controversial when Michaela Negra herself is controversial within itself, you know? Oh, also, I was recently on the news, and I want to take you guys with me to Fox News. Here we go. Guys, follow me. Here we go. Back at it again. Excuse me, it's the uh, first door. Second door on the left. Okay. Can we ride up here to restaurant? Yeah. I'm talking about the teacher. That 
Is this like the green room to like powder yeah. your nose and yeah. stuff like that? Like these two, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. How about, I was told there was a green room, but I never found it. Before. Well, yeah. their version of a green room. <laughs> yeah, there, it's not uh, a green room. Yeah. have the snacks. <laughs> So the whole night I was just like. Okay, so I'm getting ready for my segment. Probably go to the green room to like touch up or something, but uh, this is what the set looks like. In the shining room. All the lights up there. It's pretty neat. So um, when you come back to me, you'll see me talking on TV. So be back. Two. This program is being brought to you by Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. The names Armani and Dior are staples and highly respected in the world of high fashion. Both are facing serious allegations, mainly of exploiting workers and possibly charging hundreds of times over for their products compared to what they spend on them. Italy's competition authority is leading the investigation. Earlier this year, prosecutors say expensive bags were sold by Armani and Dior for extremely high prices and sold to the consumer for luxury rates. Around $50 for labor on a Dior bag. Get that $50 for labor on a Dior bag, according to this organization, that sold for over $2,000. And around $100 for Armani bag that sold for just under $2,000. That's minus the leather and other trappings. Investigators in Italy say those same bags were created by immigrants who were severely underpaid. Joining us to talk about it now tonight, publicist and fashion expert Bridget Holden and influencer Rich Lux, and they both have them <laughs> damn luxury <laughs> bags here with us. Yeah, love what fashion. <laughs> Carl Lagerfeld and <laughs> Christian <laughs> Dior. <laughs> I'm gonna attack those bags. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so when you, you guys hear this, so number one, we we see individuals are involved. And some would compare it to slave labor. Mm. And they're grossly underpaid, according to this investigating authority in Italy. And then, for you guys, you guys paid a lot of money for those products, but pennies on the dollar compared to what you paid. So, Brigitte, let's start with you. Your thoughts on this? Well, like you said, it's slave labor. I mean, it's almost in comparison to the blood diamonds. Mm -hmm. You know, people are spending money to make a quality product and then when it's shipped here, we pay more. So it's not fair for the people in the industry who are making these bags. I mean, you need to have, these bags sell for a lot of money. Right. They need to make at least half or if not more for putting the work in to design these bags for us to carry around. And Rich, what do you think it takes us as a society to mm -hmm. get the same mindset that we had with blood diamonds. People are like, there's no way I'm gonna buy anything associated with blood diamonds out of Africa. I think once the investigation and it goes through and we find out how much these people are getting paid, pennies on the dollar, what I think the article said, and it, it's such a shame because we, we're buying into a brand because we think that, you know, we buy this brand, we have exclusivity, maybe it attracts a, a partner, male or female, so we're buying into this, and to find out it's all, it's like, I feel like I'm like a scam almost. Mm -hmm. so. 
you know, and, and it almost dilutes the brand itself. And it's sad because he spent a lot of money on it. And it's almost like, do people even want to rob me now? <laughs> <laughs> No one is fifty dollar bag. Is, is, is that your goal to be robbed? No, no. But you know, there's this whole culture of flexing on social media and showing your your diamonds or your bags, or your clothing, and now it's we know the true price of these of these items. It's like, well, I don't want that. Exactly. And so when we have individuals who say it doesn't matter to me, I have nothing to do with it. I pay for my bags. I don't care what goes on behind the scenes. What do you do with people like that? Well, you know, you? social consciousness has to play a part in that. Because, like more, exactly. More culture. Yeah. Yeah. More culture. Because, I mean, like Rich said, I don't even know if I want to carry the bag anymore. Not because I don't want, any, I don't want anybody to rob me, but because it's social conscious. And if you have a conscious, you know that that's not right. We got them to, you know, turn their, change their minds on the blood diamonds because why would you wear a diamond? That has caused I think to also lives. included in that mm -hmm. issue was public pressure. Mm -hmm. It's exactly. like, if you're wearing this, or, I mean, mm -hmm. take for instance, PETA. Mm -hmm. If you're wearing real fur, they're going to throw mm -hmm. some blood on you or yeah. something Absolutely. on you, Absolutely. you know? And sometimes you need public pressure in order to guide you, right, Rich? Absolutely. I think something happened similar to Balenciaga in the past of their, the scandal that they went through with a couple years ago. And it applied pressure. So when people wear that brand, people are, you know, side eyeing them. So I think you are right. It is public pressure needs to be applied to that. So knowing that some of the bags, like the Dior and Armani that we're wearing, are being basically slave labor. All right, and really quick, show that picture, Sonora. We almost <laughs> forgot your your topic, the BBL costume. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, really quick, in in ten seconds, what do you guys think? I love it. More power to you. I love power to you. You have to go under the knife to get it done. You can wear it. And, and so that is, you know, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's yeah, doing yeah, much. They're doing that's, too that, much. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> and what is that, Sonar? That's, that's, that's a male game. booty yep, and the male, male what? Uh, ass. Male booty and yeah, boobies. Yeah, boobies and ass. So y'all, y'all, y'all would wear it for Halloween. Uh, this is no. ridiculous. <laughs> Get people to go to the website. That's and look it. Around. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back in a moment with Dr. Angela Jones. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you want me to? Yeah. Oh no, man. Hold on. Hold on. It should still just be rolling. Right? Yeah. Bro, I didn't even know, dog. Let's just keep it rolling. So we're just uh, finished Isaiah Factor, going home. I'm gonna stop by the restroom and wash this off. But if it's all the way over, then it's gonna, it's not, it's, it's gonna be pressing down on this all the way across. Oh, well, here's a green one. Yeah. This guy, if this is this whole length, this will, this will still be present. Why would they do that? I love him. Yeah, shut up with a real bag. Like, yeah, up here. <laughs> <laughs> a real bag. Say, I can make your look at $50 bag. $50 bag. Y'all be safe. Bye, you too. So we're in the restroom. I. Can't wait to get out of this. So, we gotta have a little bang here some more. So, how do you think it went? I think it went good. Cameraman, very, very good. Yeah. It's my last one. So, yeah. Make it count. Yeah. 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 So, I used to get these lashes. I get these lashes for like, I think it's like 30 of them for a dollar. So, I already just passed these out. So, I use those. Um, they're like, they're just for show, like just for camera, you know what I'm saying? My good ones are like $30 for one lash. And those like, you know, more high quality. But for a good like one and done, I use those. But, uh, so anyways, yeah, I think I had a great time today. So it was like just like going through the motions of it. And the thing is like, I didn't, um, I just was called like last minute. Like they literally asked me and then you texted me and I was like, hey, you wanna go with me? And it's like worked out that way. So yeah.
So, but like this is, you see how it stays on here? It's black. That's like the really good eyeliner. And so I like to use a cheap eyeliner so it just wipes right off. But I actually use a good one today. Um, so it kind of like, I have to like scrub it more. Which just sounds weird to like, why do you want cheap makeup? So I can just like take it off really quickly. Because cheap makeup is actually pretty good for me. But I'm in just, if I'm in makeup for like one or two hours, I don't need a, I don't need 24 hour, 36 hour wear. Because sometimes some of the makeup advertise like long, like they, it can wear long like that. I don't need it to wait to like be on me that long. So sometimes I prefer to use cheap makeup because I don't need it to stay on that long. But if I'm doing red carpets or TV, I tend to use like better makeup so it just looks better on camera. Does that make sense? Yeah, hopefully. Okay. And then, And then like part of this gig is that like being on the road and you're like traveling or doing shows or concerts or whatever, you just know like to pack light. Sometimes you gotta get off the floor brush, brush your teeth, you know that type of thing. And so I just kind of figured out. Is it all off? So the producer of the show, um, I'm gonna give this to her. But. Hello. All right, I was gonna give this to um, Sonoya, the producer. Yeah, this is your phone. I said give for her. Okay. Yeah, but I forgot how to pronounce her name. Sonora. Sonora, is this yeah. for her? She knows it's, uh, I told her I was gonna leave it up for her. So okay, no problem. Just let her know, Rich, my name's Rich Lux. Yeah, Rich. Yeah, I'll give no her her Okay, okay. Hopefully she likes it. <laughs> you go up, girl. parking lot out here uh, Fox News is what it looks like that's what the studio looks like and so now we're gonna jump in the jump in the Bentley jump in the Rolls Royce and head out so uh, I'll see you guys later I find that to be very interesting um, I do want to say before I go any further, I went to the thrift store. I went thrift store shopping and I found the cutest book and I don't know why I bought it. It was $1.99 for this book, right? And it's called Frankenstein, a monster parody. And when I opened the book, I just fell in love with like, like the way things are drawn on here. Not so much that one, <laughs> but like just like some of the parodies of it, like just the way things were drawn. So I bought this book. So I plan to like clean it up a little bit and then give it to um, like a niece or nephew because I I fall in love with this book. So anyways, it's a creepy old castle all covered with spines. Live 12 ugly monsters in two crooked lines. That's like the whole thing of the book. So I can't wait to like fix it up. And then I just wanna show you, I wanna brag what I got at the thrift store. I rarely go thrift store shopping, but when I do, I hit it big. I bought these. These were a dollar ninety nine each. Like, are these are these a good deal? I don't know. Are these a good deal? Anyways, these are a dollar ninety nine each. So yeah, I got a little rat, and I got that. That's what I got. And I think they're super. What did you say? Yes, we're gonna get back to the drama. Yeah, yes, we're gonna get back to the drama. So I got those two, and then I picked up. I had to get these. I think these were so super super cute. I got something for the door, and then I got a trash bag that is, you know. Pumpkins, and I got one which I love this one the most, the ghost one. So I can't wait to like pay with these. Okay, so moving on, James Charles had a meltdown because he, re you know, if you guys don't know, he's on tour, he's overseas, and he's doing promoting his painted makeup over there. Well, then he's so relatable. He's so relatable. 
He buys a Rolex watch while overseas. And then he talks about how he forgot to get it, uh, like the money back portion of it. Here we go, Rolex. Today I learned a valuable lesson, never be fucking honest, especially not to the US government. Oh, I'm currently in Dublin, okay, flying home. Had a lovely two week tour over in the UK and Ireland. I bought myself a watch, okay, I bought myself a nice fucking roly 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 with a Deborah Ranch. It was very expensive and I don't get myself gifts very often and it's beautiful, I'm loving it, I'm so excited. And because I shopped in Ireland, okay, I get my fucking tax back. That's right, Uncle Sam, you get not a fucking penny. Well, apparently he did get a fucking penny, okay? Oh God. I'm barely making this fucking flight. Oh my God, I'm gonna I get to the fucking Dublin airport and I'm like, I have my tax forms all filled out, ready to go. Okay, I'm ready to get this fucking 3,000 USD back of taxes. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. That's amazing, right? I get to the customs thing. I hand them my thing and say, like, oh, do you have any expensive items to declare? And I was like, yeah, I bought a watch. I need to find the, um, the money back for And she's like, oh, you already passed that. And I was like, oh. Like, damn, that sucks. But like, okay, I just need to go. I need to get on my flight. And she's like, well, you admitted that you have something to declare. I'm like, yes, of course I do. I just told you that I have to form my backpack. She's like, you need to come with me. I'm like, come with you to where? I need to go to my plane. She's like, no, sorry, you actually, you admitted it. So you have to come to the fucking border patrol office. What? You, you're kidding me. You flush your fucking mind. So they take my fucking passport, they take my boarding pass, and I go sit in this fucking room with a hundred other people. Okay, there's a million other people in there. The agents, one man is working the desk. Okay, and they go one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. My friend that I'm traveling with literally texting me being like, hi, are you okay? Where'd you go? Like, are you getting, what's happening to you? Are you getting put in Irish prison? No, I fucking should have lied about my stupid Rolex. So I get to the office. Everyone in there is like, on the edge of their seat. Everyone's yelling at each other. Everyone's screaming. I literally am like, hi, my flight's about to board in 10 minutes. Is there any priority for flights that are boarding? The guy goes, nope. I literally look at him and go, no need to have a fucking attitude, loser. Oh my God. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. The lady next to me is so sweet. She's so kind. She's trying to calm me down. She's being so sweet. She's like, I've been here for a couple minutes now. They seem to be going pretty fast. Like, you'll be okay. They know that you're there. I'm like, okay, amazing. Sounds good. I'm trying not to scold them. They finally get me up to the counter. I will say the guy was very, very, very nice. He's like, you're fine. They know you're here. I know your flight is boarding right now. We're going to get you on it. It's all good. He's like, you just have to answer some questions and we're going to pay, give the pay, the, the, the duties. I was like, I'm sorry. Pay the duties? No, 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 no. You're sadly mistaken, sir. I have to perform my fucking bag. I want my $3,000 back. He's like, yeah, no, you actually missed that. Now, because you admitted that you have it, you have to pay American taxes on it. In addition to what I already paid. You motherfuckers have lost your fucking mind. Uncle Sam, if I fucking see you, it's on site, you dumb ass bitch. So you better better pay that fucking $350 and I'm gonna figure it out when I get back. I'm going, I'll, if I need to, I'll get right back on a fucking plane to Dublin to get that money because that is ridiculous. Oh my God, I should have just fucking went to the stupid currency thing as soon as I landed in the airport and lied. I would have fucking lied. They would have never even known I had the stupid watch in the fucking bag and I would have had $4,000 in my pocket. <sighs> what are we paying fucking taxes for this country? And nobody seems to care. And it comes across like very entitled. He's so upset with the government. Like, honestly, like James Charles losing $4,000. It's not the end of the world. I mean, to be upset about losing $4,000, just to be honest. I'm sorry, my apartment is like halfway empty because I'm in the move. But to be upset about losing $4,000. <coughs> Do you not realize that some people don't even have that money? For you to complain about $4,000, if it affected you that bad, you shouldn't have bought a Rolex. Because a person who really bought a Rolex wouldn't even blink twice about 4K. Let's just be honest about that. If you're upset over the $4,000 that you missed out on, then maybe you shouldn't have bought a Rolex. Maybe it's out of your budget. Mm -hmm. And not only that, then he's literally telling his entire audience, Hello, yes, Uncle Sam. Do you guys, do you guys see the United States government? Do you guys see that James Charles was telling his audience he should have lied on customs? Like, you know, like, that you can go to jail for that or something. Like, that's not okay to, to lie. I remember when I went to Paris, they were very adamant about claiming and declaring things that you bought over there. Very, very adamant. And um, you couldn't just hide it. And so James wanted to hide it. And then he had to go to a separate room. It was, everything's an inconvenience. God forbid. Like, James Charles is really coming across on social media. This, like, arrogant, entitled person. Like, like things are just owed to him. And... At first, I didn't see it, but now like, I'm starting to see it more and more. And I'm just like, how is the girls who, are, who can barely afford his $30 blush can relate to him buying a Rolex and being upset with the cost of that? And can he even afford a Rolex if he's complaining about him? Could he, he wanted to get, be tax-free? You know what I'm saying? 
So anyways, I really want to know what you guys think about all that in the comments down below. This is Versa Lux with the hottest celebrity news and gossip on YouTube. Mwah.